Hi, this is Cindy B at CindyBDesigns.com for the Paper Craft Crew this week and we are going to be doing card sketch number 189. I really like this sketch a lot and that's why I'm going to do it this week with you rather than something else. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to zoom out here just a little bit. Oops, did a lot. We're going to use this fabulous stamp set is called Picture Perfect and it's two and three step stamping. You can see with these leaves here one, two, three, same with the roses, same with the birds. This is four step stamping actually. We're going to be using the starfish because I wanted to make more of a masculine kind of card and we we have a lot going on. It was just it's a great sketch, and what I have picked out, good solid masculine colors with a lot of texture going on. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, I have a piece of early espresso cardstock, and this is cut to five and a half. I'm yeah five and a half by eight and a half and then I flipped it and scored it at four and a quarter. Again, here's my score line and what you want to do is fold it back on itself and get your bone folder and go ahead and give that just a really nice crease. And what that does is your paper does not crack and it doesn't compromise the integrity of it. So we're going to go ahead and set this aside so once again, that was our base. Let's go ahead and get working on um, our image that we're going to put on top here. Again, I'm going to go ahead and use those starfish. I'm going to go ahead and pull in this great mini misty. It's perfect for card makers. I love it. And a lot of them, um, I think everybody uses this almost. With these one and two step stamp sets, three and four, what Stampin' Up! has done for you is that they will number it for you. This one goes down first, this one goes down second, and then you have this little tab to help you line up, there you go, line up the images there. But with a Misty, you don't need to do that. So when you put down your first stamp, and another reason why I'm using this is because I haven't inked this up yet and we know with photopolymer you have to give it a little bit of a workout first. I'm going to go ahead and move that over there just in case I need to ink it up again. And now I can zoom in a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and close the slid, pick it up, and the colors I've chosen is crumb cake and early espresso. Now, with image number one, or the image that has more, okay, I'm, I'm having a moment here. The image that has more stamp to it, I know that did not sound right. Your first layer always wants to be your lightest ink color. So I am just going to lay down some crumb cake here. And again, I am going to pay attention to where that little tab is. And I will have a product review on this green thing that you see me using. It's not that the need for baby wipes. So I'm going to remember that this is pointing up towards my magnet and then just give it a really, really, really good press. And remember a few weeks ago, the arthritis friendly video. And even if you don't have the Misty, what's really cool about clear stamps especially, you still have the tab to help you line up and you can see through these. 
and please excuse my voice, it is full allergy season in beautiful Northern California. Okay, so that turned out very nice. I'm happy with it. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab my second image off of my stamp sheet here. And remember that just a mental note that's pointing it that way. Kind of a rule of thumb for me is if I don't see anything underneath my stamp itself or any ink, pink, ink peeking out, I generally have my stamp dead on. But on the same token, I'm really not too worried about it either. Because sometimes with these two, three, four step stamping sets, it's not all about the perfection. So that was crumb cake. Now we're going to go ahead and grab early espresso. And you want color. Whoa. That is dark. You want colors that. Maybe it just looks funky on this image. It looks gray. You want colors that have some really good contrast to them. Let me see if I can find a piece of scratch paper here. Okay, this was a watercolor fail. I'm going to It's really espresso. Kind of freaked me out there for a moment. And I'll just give that a good press. Another thing too, flip it over. Now this is great about this mini misty. Is that it's so portable and it's just awesome. And you can see right here, I'm kind of off a little bit, but that's okay. I've never seen a perfect starfish in my life, and I don't expect to now. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull my image out of here. I'm not quite sure if I'm feeling it yet with what I have going on. But I think that it will work out in, yeah, well, in the long run. Now for this little baby here. I'm just going to get my stamp off real fast. And it sounds kind of, let's take our fingers down the chalkboard, but it's called a stamp chamois and you can go to actually any auto parts store and get yourself something like this or go out to your garage and then cut one to size. It's eliminated baby wipes for me pretty much and the need to use a stamp cleaner which saves me money in the long run. So I'm going to set my Misty aside for a second. What I want to do with my image I have here, I do want to fussy cut this out and unfortunately we don't have any dies for this. And I want to leave a slight white border around this. So when you cut, just move your cardstock rather than your scissors, and you will get a nice border. So I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting this out. Now I'm only halfway done with this, but one thing I wanted to show you is that when you get two corners like this down at the bottom and up here you want to make sure that you have your scissors down as far as possible because that way it's just so much easier to move your card stock and what I did was kind of sneak mine halfway up in between a little bit and then when I go around the corner and turn my card stock I get a much more even cut and it's not jagged. 
So we're just going to go ahead and finish cutting this up. And once again, look where my scissors are. And I'm going to go all the way up. And sometimes you kind of, kind of got to go, kind of got to go like that. my starfish. I think that turned out very nice. So we're going to set this aside and in keeping with the sketch, I've layered it up a little bit more. I've already cut a piece of tip top taupe that's an eighth of an inch less than my A2 size card base and then I put a layer on top of I believe it's Everyday Elegance I'll have everything linked in the blog post on top of that I already adhered it so when it's laid down it's going to look beautifully just like that so what we have next is our flag I'm sorry this is this layer is crumb cake this is tip top taupe so the die cut that we're going to be using for our flag comes from the Banners Frameless dies. I'm using the second one. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab my Big Shot. And bring that on up. Zoom out. Stick it through. I have my magnetic platform. clear plate down. I'm going to grab another one, pop that on top, and crank it on through. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because that flag is going to be too long for my card. And I wanted to show you a little trick to cut it after you figure out exactly where you want it to go in order. So you get this nice even line at the top that's consistent with everything else and not just simply cut with scissors across because you will be able to tell the difference. But until then we're going to have to do just a little bit of measuring with our card. So I'm going to set that aside and bring everything back in here. Remember, we have those, sorry about that, that was my big shot literally falling into my garbage can because it was set on top of it. Normally I cl close my laptop, but I forgot to do it this time. That is too long and I don't like it. So we need to move this up just a little bit. And with our sketch, remember we have this out here. So I've already gone ahead and done that. And I use the largest framelit from the deco labels to get that right there. This was cut out of corrugated craft board, which is some pretty cool stuff. Nice texture to it. And it's a little bit on the big side, but we're going to get that fixed. So what I want to do is just kind of get that lined up a little bit. And use my mat so that it's straight. And not go too far down. Then I just want to put like a little tip mark right up there with my pencil. This is where I'm going to go ahead and grab my big shot back in out of the garbage. Now, to fix this, okay, I'm just going to lay this down. I'm going to go ahead and grab my flag die once again. I'm at a 
really funky angle here to get this lined up. And I just want that cut at the top. So I'm going to put the very edge of it right near that line there. Make sure this part here, make sure it's even. Okay, that looks not right to me. So place it on there very carefully or get yourself a piece of low tack tape, which is even a better idea. Just to make sure that is straight. And I'm going to stand up real quick. So sorry if you get a headshot here. But this is something I don't want to mess up. So you're kind of customizing the length of your flag. And then you have that nice, clean cut consistency, which that's something that's pretty important to me as a crafter. So I'm going to peel that tape off, move that, and there you go. You still have that border up there. Now a little bit remain behind, but that's simple enough to fix. Just grab a pair of scissors. Snip that off. And if you got a pencil mark, just go ahead and get that erased. And you're good to go. Also, if it doesn't come off, it's going to be covered anyway. But I just still wanted that nice, clean line at the very top. So I'm going to grab this back in with my card. And I think it's looking pretty good. Now the next thing I want to do with our flag is add some texture to it. And with that, I'm going to be using the brick embossing folder. And it doesn't look brick once we get it on here. So my lines with this piece of craft, they are going horizontally. So for my brick wall embossing folder, we are going to make them go vertically. Just to kind of, again, a little bit of interest. Okay, not probably not the best idea to go ahead and adhere that down. So I'm just going to be really super careful when I close it. Now you know that when you use an embossing folder that you have to change your magnetic platform out to get the multi-purpose platform platform tab to plate and embossing folder and this is a six by six embossing folder so just be really careful pop it in there and then crank it on through and that will give me some really nice texture. So I'm going to get my big shot out of the way again. Pull this up, and it looks pretty cool. Now I know this piece is going to be larger, and I was completely expecting that. But I want this detail over here on the side. So I know I'm going to have to cut right there just to get this off here. And I have a little bit there. So 
I'm going to start right there and just go straight back and kind of see what happens with how long this goes in. how far I want it to stick out. I think that looks good. I have just a teeny little bit over here. And no one's going to see this, so don't worry. Let's go ahead and get some adhesive right on the back of our little panel here. And I'm just using the lines. Before I press it in, keep your sketch handy. Make sure it looks cool. And that looks great to me. I'm just going to go ahead and grab my scissors and cut this excess off because we really don't need it. I am not going to put down this panel just yet onto my card. What I do want to do, however, is grab my paper piercer. And unfortunately, I don't have a mat, but I have a towel. And I have an antique brad that I want to put right there in the middle. And I'm just going to give that a nice poke all the way through. Grab the brad, stick that in the middle. I think it looks pretty cool. And kind of pay attention to where you're Oh, for lack of a better term, tentacles are coming out from the starfish. I know that's like an octopus term, but I can't think of anything else. Then I'm going to go ahead and close that, and there we go. We're going to set this aside. And before we start putting all this together, let's go ahead and get our sentiment on. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and pull back in my Misty. I'm just going to line everything up a little bit. Now our sentiment's going to be pretty small, and instead of putting it down here, I feel that it would get lost at the bottom. I'm going to put it up here. Then again, maybe not. The beauty is that you can really see when you place it. You know what? I am going to stick with the sketch and put it down here, and I'll tell you why. Because we have all this going on at the top, which would leave this down here kind of bare. However, it's kind of small, so that's the so once again, I'm going to gar grab my Early Espresso ink that looks black and gray. Give that nice thinking up. Close it. And you probably don't have to do it as hard as I'm doing it. Use my little squeegee thingy there to wipe it up. And look how clean my stamp co comes out. That is so cool. Okay. That's all that we're going to use the Misty for on top right now. 
So I want to pull my card base back in and everything else back in. I'm not going to put this up on dimensionals just because we have a lot going on. Now if you look at the top of this, the sketch, we do have two strips of paper going across. Then there's also this small, small, small line of twine. I'm going to omit that because I just can't find mine. And I think we're looking pretty cool there. So let's go ahead and get some adhesive on the back of this. And it's going to be a little bit of tricky because we have a few angles we're working with, but I don't mind my banner sticking up off the edge or knotted here down all the way on my cards. I'm not too fussy about that. Oh, I do need to zoom in. Okay, so I think that we're looking very good there. I'm only going to grab one really large glue dot. And just, or a piece of foam tape, actually, and stick it right in the middle there. Because that should keep it pretty secure. And again, I do like how that's lifting up off the page or off the card. If you don't, just go ahead and add some baby ones down there. But it's going to be wonky if you do because that because of the bread. And this is going to stick. So we're going to get this in a good position. And in the middle as much as possible so this can just go in a regular envelope and this is where I have to drag my card base back in because it's going to give me an eighth of an inch wiggle room and I think we're looking pretty good there so I'm just going to go ahead and press that down now for button up here at the top. I am going to go ahead and do that. I just found this button in my stash. I'm going to pop it on a glue dot and these guys are strong. I already have some hemp cord tied through this. I can't find my linen thread unfortunately and I also didn't want to cut this to size until I had some adhesive on the back. So I'm going to put one more glue dot on there. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Just going to press that down and then cut. The sketch has a bow on it. I don't like putting bows on masculine cards. And you know what? We're done. That didn't take any time at all. At least I hope it didn't. I didn't have my timer running next to me or anything like that. I think it looks pretty cool. If you, I have some candy dots here, but I was going to scatter them. But I think in this instance, less is more. And we have some really good color, really good texture going on, a nice masculine card. And we're not done. I want to lift this up. I am going to go ahead and put some fun foam on the back. I have several pieces here. I keep it. It's very inexpensive, but it's something that you don't want to waste either.
I miss, I cut it all to just a little bit smaller than the card. Or that panel. So I'm just going to bet that up against... The last piece and then I have a little square here and we are going to be good to go then I just have to put adhesive on the back of this panel and then we are completely done and so I have all my adhesive on the back and I have it peeled off once again I'm just going to get my card straight with my grid mat because I don't have a lot of wiggle room left at one eighth of an inch. And just be creative tape is not too forgiving either. Now we have our card. Isn't that cool? It's pretty nice. So we can do the inside too. I am going to go ahead and just and once again, this is cut down to one eighth of an inch smaller than your A2 standard size card base. This is crumb cake. So I'm going to open that up. Get it positioned on the inside. I did a great job. This is our sentiment panel here. I'm not laying this down because if you've been with me for a while, you know I cannot stand the sentiment straight to save my life. This makes it much easier. I'm going to go ahead and grab that starfish back in. And I'm going to grab the one. I'm going to grab number two. And it's very hard to tell, but this looks like it. So I'm just going to kind of lay that right down there at the very bottom. Pull that up. Go ahead and grab some. Crumb cake. Now remember, this is the one that we used on the outside with the early espresso. I'm just going to close this and give it a press. That's exactly what I wanted. Sorry if you hate that sound. But having one of these things, you, you it just clean up is easier, working is easier, everything is easier. So I'm feeling pretty good about my little starfish there. So let's go ahead and pick out another sentiment. And I think, okay, outside our hearts decide who is family. I have learned that. You are made of wonderful. How's that? Everybody likes to hear that. We're going to put it up here to where you still have room to write a note to your recipient. I'm going to close this cover, open it back up, and it looks like I have it straightened out. I have a glare here, whereas you don't, so I'm really hoping for the best. And that's why it's not adhered to my panel for the inside of that card yet. Perfect. That turned out great. 
Now look how easy that ink comes off. So once again, I'm going to get that lined up. do take my time. I am pokey with this, I will admit that. I'm just going to close and press. Because if I have any wet ink, I definitely don't want to smear it. Now's the time to grab these candy dots. I am going to go ahead and get an early espresso one. And put it right in the middle there because it does need something and it's still masculine so here we have our card this is the inside I think it's fabulous I love it in the still shots I'll show you the envelope that I make and this is the outside of our card featuring cool yay nice featuring the paper craft Crew card sketch 189. Say that 10 times, three times real fast. And I hope that you enjoy this video. And I know a lot of you struggle with masculine cards, with them being a little bit difficult to make, but it's all about the colors and the images. And we have some really good texture going on, especially with the background paper and this corrugated craft just the double stamping we have this antique brad we also have this brick embossing folder going on and i think that it just turned out to be a lovely card i hope that you do too thank you so much for joining me today and for joining all of us at the papercraftcrew.com no, papercraftcrew.com. That is our website. We look forward to your participation. We have block candy a few times a month. Please enjoy your participation and taking a look at what you made. So we hope that you share it with us. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with us. And we hope that you come back again soon. God bless and take care. Have a great one. This has been Cindy Coots for the Papercraft Crew. Bye.